this type of question that we're going to look at now is to do with lifts and boxes on top of boxes, okay? This is where things can be a little bit more confusing because it, it at first feels like it's going again, against what we think is true. I'm gonna be getting you to do a lot of imagining of being different things in this scenario. Imagining that you're a box sat on top of another box or you've got a box sat on top of you, all of that kind of stuff, to try and work out what the forces are that you experience. And sometimes they might be a little bit different to what you're expecting, but hopefully we're gonna try and clear up why these are the forces. So I'm gonna start off by talking about a lift kind of question. So we're going to be thinking about someone who is standing inside a lift, because it's a slightly easier one for us to relate to. Um, and I hope that you've all obviously think about what it feels like when you're in a lift and how it feels when you're moving up and down. So we're just gonna read through this question and try and pick out some information here. It says that a woman travels in a lift. The mass of the woman is 50 kilograms and the mass of the lift is 950 kilograms. The lift is being raised vertically by a vertical cable which is attached to the top of the lift. The lift is moving upwards and has a constant deceleration of two meters per second. By modeling the cable as being light and inextensible, find the tension in the cable. That bit's gonna be absolutely fine. This is the bit where we need to think a little bit more carefully. It says find the magnitude of the force exerted on the woman by the floor of the lift. And we'll talk, to that, talk about that bit in more detail when we actually get to that. So previously, when we've looked at connected particles, this is a connected particle. We've got a woman who is essentially connected to this lift just with her feet. And we're going to try and find out some things that are happening there. Now, previously we were able to look at the whole system and we're going to be able to do the same thing again in this one that we've got here. So we've got a lift and inside the lift is the woman. But really what we can actually do is just imagine this as one whole thing. OK, this one whole thing that we've got has got a total mass of 1000. So we should be able to just work out what the tension is going to be. Now, we can either think here's the woman's mass, which is 50. So the weight would be 50 G and the lift has a mass of 950. So its weight is 950 G. Because we're looking at the whole system there, we're not worrying about any other forces, okay? We're just thinking about what's the force that's trying to go up, what's the forces that are trying to go down. And coming out the top of this lift is the cable, which we know is going to have a tension, right? And it says something about the way the lift is moving. Does it tell us which direction the lift is moving in? It says it's moving upwards. So even though it's not accelerating upwards because it tells us that it's decelerating, I'm going to say that it is moving upwards and it's moving upwards with an, ex an acceleration of minus two. It's important that we know which direction we're saying it's moving in here. So this first part should be no different at all. We're just going to resolve upwards using F equals MA. Now, the resultant force is just going to be the force that's going up minus the forces that are going down. So that's T minus 50G minus 950G. The mass we just said is the combined mass, which is 1000. And the acceleration, we know it's moving up, but it's slowing down. So we say that the acceleration is minus 2. So that must mean that T minus 1000 G is equal to minus 2000. And all I'm gonna do is just add 1000 G to both sides. So that's minus 2000 plus 1000 G. don't really know why I used a calculator for that, actually. So we have 7,800 newtons. Now, 1,000 G, whoops, I haven't got an extra zero in there. 1,000 G is 9,800. So you can see, if this is 7,800 and this is 9,800, that's why it's slowing down. But you couldn't say that the tension would be zero because the lift would be free falling to Earth at a, an acceleration of minus 9.8. If we wanted it to accelerate upwards, for getting faster, the tension is obviously going to have to be bigger than 9,800 to overcome that 9,800 force. 
and we would no longer have a negative value here, we would have a positive value instead. So here comes the bit that's maybe a little bit different, but you've all been inside a lift before, so this should be fine. We're now going to try and find out the magnitude of the force exerted on the woman by the floor of the lift. So what we're actually doing is we're trying to find the force exerted on the woman. So what we're going to do here is we're going to zoom in on the woman. Okay, we're, not, we're no longer looking at the whole scenario anymore of the entire lift. We're actually, we've become more interested in what does the woman feel that is happening to her inside the lift. Okay, so I'm going to draw now just, this is a picture of the woman standing on the floor of the lift. I know it's a very realistic drawing. And this woman is experiencing only two forces, okay? She's always going to experience her weight, which is 50 G. But she experiences another force. And the other force that you're experiencing is the upwards force, which is the normal reaction. Now, this R that we've got here is the force exerted on the woman by the floor of the lift. That is what this R is. Now, prepare yourself to, maybe this won't be surprising to you, but if anyone ever says to you, like, um, if, I, if I ask you to think about your weight right now, what it feels like, your weight as a force, what you're probably thinking about, actually, is your normal reaction to the surface you're on, okay? If you suddenly put a huge backpack on, yeah, you do feel like something pulling you down, but really what you feel is a greater force in your legs, and that is telling your brain, my weight has increased, because you feel like a greater force on your legs, okay? Have you ever been in a lift, and the lift is starting to slow down as you're moving upwards? What does it feel like? You feel like you're floating, okay? You feel like you're floating. You feel like you're becoming weightless. Not fully weightless, because that would be like floating. You feel like you're becoming weightless. So I'm just gonna do a quick side calculation for a second. Um, if, if she wasn't accelerating, we would say that her weight would feel like 50 G, and 50 G is 490 Newtons, okay? You don't have to write this bit down here, but this is what 50 G is the number, it's 490 Newtons. Because she's moving upwards, we're expecting there to feel this kind of weightlessness, okay? And we know that she's moving upwards with a deceleration of minus two. So I'm just gonna do another um, F equals MA, but this time it's for the woman. And so we get R minus 50 G equals the mass times the acceleration. So we get R minus 50 G equals minus 100, whoops. So R is equal to minus 100 plus 50 G. So that is 50 G, oh, again I could just do this on my, in my brain. So R is 390. So she's feeling in her legs a normal reaction that is 390. Normally, when she's just stood still, her legs feel a normal reaction of 490, which explains why Red One says when you go up in a lift and it starts to, to decelerate, that's why you feel weightless, because your legs are feeling a force that they're not used to. They're normally used to feeling 490 newtons, and now they're, being, they're feeling 390, 390 newtons. And that's telling your brain, whoa, have I suddenly lost loads of weight? No, your, your normal reaction has actually changed there. So what would happen if the lift was um, speeding up? Like, you know when you get in the lift and you press the button and it starts moving? You feel really heavy, okay? You feel really, really heavy because if I just quickly like changed what this calculation would be, if this became a positive acceleration, it would have been a positive two, it would have been a positive 100, a positive 100, and it would have become 590, and that's why you feel heavy. You don't actually get heavier, your legs feel like you're getting heavier. What kind of questions do we have about this? Is there anything that we want to ask a bit more about this? You had a question before, Nabil. Because, oh, 50 multiplied by 9.8 is 490. So anytime I'm using G here, I'm meaning 9.8, okay? And that just comes from our 
formula that we say that weight is equal to mass times g, where g is 9.8. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of all those blue bits just so that we know we're actually answering the question there. So 390, that's less than what her normal normal reaction is, her regular normal reaction is. So that's why she feels weightless when it is slowing down. Looked at the whole lift, zoomed in on the woman because of the forces that we were asking about here. Okay? I'm going to separate this again into another video because...